today from the Heart Math Institute in the beautiful Santa Cruz Mountains. And our guest is Roland McCready. He's the director of research for Heart Math Institute. Hey, welcome Evan. Nice Thank to have you here. Thank you so much. We're happy to be here and fascinated by our understanding of your work and looking forward to sharing with our audience the nitty-gritty of what are you doing here. So give us the nitty-gritty. What are you doing at the Heart what Math Institute? What are we Institute? doing here? <laughs> Heart Math is more than about managing stress. It's really about unfolding who we really are by getting the heart and brain in sync. That's one of the most effective ways to, to really get a handle on self-regulating the situations that cause the emotions that underlie stress. And this is what you mean by coherence, is when the heart and the mind are in sync? Well, it's an aspect of coherence, mm -hmm. yes. Uh, so coherence is a kind of an umbrella term, and it gets very specific with very precise scientific dis definitions and formulas when we talk about how we measure it in the body, and especially in terms of our heart rhythm. We also, uh, so I use coherence at three levels. So personal coherence, how self-regulated are we, how, what's our maturity, how you know, we get along with others. Kind of our emotional maturity. Yeah, our yeah and our ability to self-regulate and, and, all, and all the physiology that goes along with that in terms of optimal function. Then we move that to social coherence, which is uh, it's defined as our, I'm going to not the scientific definition here, but how long can we get along with others? Right, work, work out our issues, or how collaborative are we, how kind are we. And then we also are working at the global coherence level, and that's a whole other topic where we're putting uh, centers around the world, uh, literally. So we have these magnetic field centers that are tuned to measure the rhythms of, in the Earth's magnetic fields. Uh, so it's a global um, system to, that we have these in Saudi Arabia, Lithuania, Canada, here on this property, New Zealand, South Africa, I think Brazil is going to be the next one. So we're able to look at how the interaction or the interconnectivity, if you will, between the Earth itself, the Earth's, think of the brain waves and heartbeats of the Earth, the, mag the field environment, the magnetic field environment of Earth, and how that's uh, interacting with humanity. Okay? So you have to get the heart into the right state, which is what we call coherence, for the brain, the brain's the big winner. So suddenly that changes the neural, I won't go into all the neural details, but uh, the, quite literally the brain gets more in sync. The heart and brain get in sync and the brain gets more in sync, so we, we have more clarity of thought, more ability to focus, better ability to self-regulate, make better choices. Uh, we end up being, we feel better and we do better. So one of the biggest sources of stress for people, and that is largely unrecognized, is the lack of alignment between their, their heart and their brain, or their heart and their mind. I don't know if you can relate to what I'm talking about, but there's just times where you're asked to do something or you're, you're doing something out of ambition because of you know, training or whatever, that it just doesn't feel right. It feels and heavy, it, I call well, it's it. That, it's yeah. that lack of alignment between what you really feel in your deeper core and what you're, you think you should do or you're being told you should do. And that, that's a huge source of stress for people, what they're often not aware of. So getting into a coherent heart state really helps align. You're actually opening the channel, if you will, to your, your deeper intuitions. It's, it's what really, so it's bringing the mind into coherence with your deeper heart. Does that makes sense. That's what lifts consciousness, by the way. That is how you shift consciousness. That's and profound. Because, because we're aligning with a, another dimension of our own innate intelligence. It already exists. We just got to tune our own inner receiver to be able to get the signal. So it's clearly an intentional shift of our perspective. Well, it, in the beginning, it's intentional because you have to choose to practice a technique to get coherent. But over time, what happens is that becomes your new, what we call baseline, your new familiar. It becomes automatic, and that's when it really becomes transformational for people. As we certainly know through some of the techniques when it comes to communication, that if we get into this coherent state, that there's measurably more synch synchronization going on between people. Not only that, is if, uh, if, if one of us were getting into a coherent state, that that actually has a measurable impact on, on other people that actually lifts them. So their, their physiology shifts and becomes more coherent. So we can actually help lift others by maintaining our own coherence. 
That's so, me. Um, yeah. And so one of our kind of things we suggest, especially in the global coherence work, uh, where we take it from the living room or the small scale like you and I right now to the, to the global, is what uh, we're, we've got some three papers I'm working on right now that are data that's just surprising us even. We've never expected to see what we're finding. And it, it's suggesting that, well, one of our hypotheses is, is that we're, we are literally coupled, or especially our heart's field, to the Earth's field, magnetic field. That the Earth is the big carrier wave, just like the cell phone is the carrier for the information. Right? That that's, we have a natural big field that's everywhere. You can't go anywhere on the planet, you know, or even up in the space station, if you're not in that field. So if, we're all, if we are coupled to that field, it explains a lot of things. And nowadays, how much, how many things did I find on the internet that made me so mad I had to share them with everyone? Yeah. Well, then you're, that's what you're feeding the field and spreading <laughs> that, right? And that's where um, the heart math techniques really can benefit a lot of people. It's the simple how you do it. That's what's been missing for a lot of people. That is the, especially a simple process for how you do it. Because um, so, that affects others, yeah. not only us. And, you know, if you, if you like what you learn and how it helps you, invite people to become a trainer. It's very easy ways for people to uh, learn how to share heart math with others. So it's, to me, it works on both levels. We've got to kind of be in the trenches, ourself first, of course, but then helping others learn how to self-regulate, especially our kids, so they don't have to unlearn all the stuff we did. Right? But uh, so training others, so there's the, the practical level of really pra learning and remembering and practicing how to, to better self-regulate, right? align with our heart's intelligence is really what it's about. But then being responsible for what we're radiating externally, how we're feeding the, the larger field. Because the more we become more coherent, which is more loving, appreciative, kind, right? That's what we're, those are real measurable things, frequencies. Um, and I don't mean that in a new age kind of way. I mean literal things that we're, we can measure feeding the field. That then helps lift others to where they can maybe find their alignment with who they really are and start that start their wake up process we seem to have gotten ourselves in a position where we're so steeped in the fear and the negativity that, that we can't see a way out and overwhelmed overwhelmed yeah. well, I, I say that because uh, we did a pretty massive uh, survey of all of our, across all the types of people we work with whether it was law enforcement military hospitals doctors ordinary people and it really boils down to people are, are overwhelmed and they don't have enough energy. I mean, their energy, because of the overwhelm, they're burning this, they don't have the energy. It's what it really came, whatever words they use, it's what it came down to. So, one of the practical things that you can start doing, you can leave here doing, or anybody can, is when you be, try and develop the a little self awareness to when you start feeling frustrated or overwhelmed or anxious or fearful, first step is you become aware of it. You've just done that but do what's called heart-focused breathing. So that means breathing as if you're breathing through the center of your chest. Mm -hmm. Now I know you don't breathe, but energetically you can. And breathe a little slower and deeper than you normally would, ideally about five seconds on the in-breath, five seconds on the out-breath. And that shifts the rhythm of the heart, So now we're sending a very different signal to the brain that really enhances cognitive function and brain function. So heart-focused breathing, that's not the whole story. If it was just about breathing, the world would not be in the mess it is hard focused breathing and then activate a feeling of love or appreciation and for a lot of people that can seem hard especially if you're in the middle of you know, some overwhelm or anxiety but what can help is for a lot of people think about how you feel when you go home and your pet greets you go to your happy place <laughs> well I, I don't, I'm, that's so mental and it kind of trivializes that's why I don't say that okay. you really want to activate that feeling you have when you're actually in that Recall what that feels like and, so, and create that feeling now. So it's, for a lot of people, it actually is with their pet, how they feel, or it's a, when they're in a special place in nature. So it's not necessarily about trying to visualize that. It, it may be, oh yeah, there I am, but how, how did I feel when I'm there? We have a lot more power to, to choose our emotional diet than we've ever believed. It just takes some practice. But these are some very simple, practical ways that uh, you can get a lot of benefit of very quickly. Maybe we could say, actually go to your happy place yeah, right. <laughs> be immersed yeah. in it don't yeah, just well, think actually, about you it actually, right? you actually have to feel it <laughs> uh, 
at Seoul, we love practical takeaways. We love tangible things. What, we're always seeking to answer that question. What can I do? I want to contribute to global coherence, to improving the world around me, my personally and in my tribe and in the world at large. From your, from your work here, your personal evolution of consciousness and transformation that you've, you've developed over so, of these decades, being uh, consciously evolving, what do you I got? Hope so. I hope what so. can you give us for our audience? Well, what mean, do you want to tell them? We've well, got a captive audience who, who are yeah. dying for something well, they can cling to. Well, there's so much. But one of the things is we really become more aware of what you're feeding the field. Okay. Self-awareness. But, but not just being self-aware. Oh, I'm feeding the field frustration. Great. That's self-aware. Okay. Change it. Okay. Well, it starts with the awareness. Yeah, it starts with the awareness. And then taking the responsibility but, but, right, for right. change. Just being mindful of it doesn't... Yeah. You're still feeding the field, sure. right? Yeah, so you have to switch that, and that's where um, the heart math techniques really can benefit a lot of people. It's the simple how you do it. That's what's been missing for a lot of people. That is the, especially a simple process for how you do it. Um, so because that affects others, you know, not only us. And you know, if you if you like what you learn and how it helps you, invite people to become a trainer. It's very easy ways for people to uh, learn how to share heart math with others. So it's, to me, it works on both levels. We've got to kind of be in the trenches, ourself first, of course, but then helping others learn how to self-regulate, especially our kids, so they don't have to unlearn all the stuff we did. Right? But uh, so training others, so there's the, the practical level of really pra learning and remembering and practicing how to, to better self-regulate, align with our heart's intelligence is really what it's about. But then being responsible for what we're radiating externally, how we're feeding the, the larger field. Because the more we become more coherent, which is more loving, appreciative, kind, right? That's what we're, those are real measurable things, frequencies. Uh, and I don't mean that in a new age kind of way. I mean literal things that we're, we can measure feeding the field. That then helps lift others to where they can maybe find their alignment with who they really are and start that, start their wake up process. Sort of when you smile, the whole world smiles with you. Hopefully, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, one of the things that you do here is train people to go out and teach yeah. heart math right. techniques to people. Yeah. We certify others to, to, to do that. Right. So what about, where can we go to find out more, to learn the techniques, to get some tools? Uh, heartmath.org is a great place to start. Right. Yeah. Any, anything in particular you'd tell us to look for? Or? Well, it depends on um, top three tools we might find. Well, well, there's actually math. a thing called free resources. So if okay. you want to get something for free, a tool, a technique. Um, free resources. Then there's, um, if you're interested in the science I've been talking about, there's a thing called the research library under the research section. It's got hundreds of published papers that you can download for free, for free PDFs. And uh, become a trainer. You know, pick up the phone and call somebody at the phone number on the website. And I'll help you. Sort that out, or, or get a book if you just want to learn about it. There's uh, the latest book, um, which I would recommend everybody. It's called Heart Intelligence. Heart Intelligence. Heart Intelligence. Yes. Have, you read, have you read we it? We have it. I've read parts. I've well, what do you think, what do you think, the think so far? I, I'm impressed. I'm encouraged. I'm. Uh, okay. I feel enlightened uh, and inspired. Okay. It just again, being aware of these things that are inherently have been there all along that we're just now recognizing. Yeah. It's a wake-up call, yeah, and, and it's it, beautiful. I love awareness. Yeah. <laughs> and if, if you want a really good kind of an overview book just about science, uh, it's called Science of the Heart. So that's also a new book that's just published a few months ago. Thanks so much you for bet. your time, Roland. Been, so, been a pleasure having you here. Come back sometime. We certainly will. We like to end with a hug. All right.